So welcome everyone to uh, Chamber Chat. Today we have Mr. Juan Presquez, who is president of Methodist Mansfield um, Hospital here in Mansfield. Yes. And uh, we can't wait to learn all about you. So um, I'm gonna start with a very easy question to get you going. All right. Where were you born? Born in Dallas. Dallas? Yeah. Okay. And how long did you live in Dallas? Was uh, it? 19 years and then left to go oh, to school. Okay. So in those 19 years, years were in that, were in the okay. place. so in those 19 years, so tell me about early on, how many siblings? <laughs> three, three, two brothers and a sister. Okay. And uh, parents were, we were all, uh, we were all in Dallas. Okay. And uh, one now lives in Houston, uh, another lives in North Carolina, and my sister is in Garland. Okay, are you in the middle, the oldest, the youngest? I'm actually in the middle. So yeah. there's a, okay. a, a, an older brother and sister. I actually had a, a, an older sister that passed away two days after uh, being born. Uh, back in those days, uh, the, the name of the ICU is really weren't, uh, well, yeah. weren't what they are today. Yeah. Uh, and then there was obviously another couple of year gap that the younger brother and I. So there's, okay. there's kind of the older two and then the younger two. And so your parents did, what, did they work? I mean, I know your dad probably did, but did your mom work? Mom was an artist. Okay. Uh, and uh, my uh, father was an electrical engineer, uh, worked for a company called E-Systems, which I think now is Motorola there in Greenville. Oh, okay. So he drove from Dallas to Greenville every day back and forth and uh, was a government contractor. Uh, it was actually one of the, uh, uh, well, he did a lot of top secret work, but uh, I've since learned that he was quite involved in the, the AWACS system, which is uh, like the V6, and you see the planes that have the little circle dome on top. Oh, so okay, uh, yeah. So he was a big radar guy. Really? And, uh, yep, through, uh, that's, uh, I was a veteran. I was in Korea uh -huh. during that war and uh, was uh, very, very, he tested very high. So they had him, uh, if one reason he was in Korea, he was at a listening post, so he spoke, spoke uh, French, Russian, and, and obviously <laughs> Spanish. Uh, I never learned Spanish, uh, but, uh, but he spoke Spanish and then obviously English. So, wow. Uh, he's still, from what I understand, fluent in, in all those languages. Wow. Uh, so, what was in growing up before you left the house? Uh, what were some of the things that were instilled in you uh, from your parents? Uh, you know, obviously, mom lived life, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, joy, smell the roses, dad very focused. Uh, you know, as electrical engineers are, he was yeah. uh, very scientific. So I think that I kind of drifted in that in that direction uh, growing up. Uh, as a science major, very interested in the sciences and, and medicine. Actually, my undergrad is in nuclear medicine uh, with a specialization in physics. So that just was just wow. Great. And that's how I met my wife. She's a math major. We met in college. Wow. And uh, math and music. So she double majored. Okay. So she's a she was an opera singer for for a long time, singing sing classical uh, type opera music, huh. and uh, and is now retired as well. Yeah. And so. Uh, well, so now when you were um, in high school, what were your aspirations? Did you kind of have an idea of what you wanted to do? What your because I I know I know you, mm -hmm. so I know some stories about you, but so and I know you've got a lot of little interesting things, but. What was it in high school that you were focused on? I was really focused on being a dentist. Uh, that was when I started in high school. It was right at the time when the DISD, Dallas Independent School District, was experimenting with the bagging schools at home. Yeah. So actually, my freshman year at Skyline, uh, my home school was Brian Adams, which is in the Black Rock District. Uh, and, and I went to Skyline, was in a cluster there, they called them, which I think it used to be Eastland Junior College, and maybe Skyline bought that campus out. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, and then they opened these magnet schools. They had one for transportation, uh, the auto transportation, uh, they had one for health care, one for uh, criminal justice, and one for arts, which is kind of like the that's a, that's a series of fame TV series. It was kind of like, yes, yes. And, uh, so I went into the health center wow. and uh, was there and was one of the early graduates to do that, uh, through that program. In that program, they started taking a shine toward dental or dentistry. And that so was, I'm curious, so, so like what, what fascinated you? What drew you to dentistry? You know, uh, it was just uh, 
It seemed like a good career at the time and uh, something I was interested in. So it, did you pursue that then after high school? You I did. Decided I went into college okay. pre dental and uh, it, and then quickly decided that really wasn't what I wanted to do. And then thought, you know, I'm only going to medicine. And so okay. that was the plan was to go pre-med. Uh, ended up there's a number of ways you can get, you know, undergrad undergraduate degree that something that fits in. Mm -hmm. And I was a little strong on the science side, so I went into the physics route. And a, a buddy of mine uh, said, you know, if you graduate with a degree in physics, you're you're gonna make you have to make sure you go into graduate school in medical school, or you're gonna you're gonna find yourself struggling to try to make something out of that. Uh, you're going to teaching, which is not which is I'm I'm not a teacher, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I knew that wasn't gonna fit for me. Wow. Um, and if that is a skill set that I admire being <laughs> to uh, to manage a classroom uh, that way. Uh, my my daughter's a teacher here in Mansfield actually, yeah. and. Uh, I, I, I hear stories about how she manages kids, and I just was like, wow, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I decided to pivot my major to go into nuclear medicine, which gave me an opportunity to work and, and earn an income. It's similar to uh, like a, radi a radiology tech okay. type degree, okay. um, but a little more specialized, where you're working with radioisotopes and radiopharmaceuticals. And uh, once I started doing that, I quickly met a uh, hospital administrator. We had lunch together mm -hmm. uh, just out of the blue. And he came to sit at my table and I thought, I want this guy's job. And so that's when I switched, switched directions. And, uh, okay, why did you want his that. job? What was it that you um, said? You know, he, uh, you know, leadership I was interested in. Obviously, uh -huh. I knew I wanted to move on in whatever I was going to be doing. And, oh, yeah, that's competition uh, for you. That's true. That's your strengths. Number one. That's my yeah, number one. Number one strength. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, I knew, I, so I quickly identified this thing, this is the job I want. He was a, uh, an ex Navy uh, guy. And so there was a, uh, there was a lot about uh, the way he carried himself, the work that he did, and the way he did it, it really just resonated with me. And uh, I had done my clinical. My resident, my clinical residency in an Air Force hospital in San Antonio, and so uh, that, that was my kind of my exposure. Uh, and I actually tried to get a commission, and uh, they couldn't find it. I started realizing how much better the compensation was uh, in the civilian world. I, I decided that wasn't for me, and so uh, I haven't looked back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, so you, how did you get to tell me about some of the transitions and where you went and what you did? Um, from deciding that you're going to be an administrator. So, I you know, graduated obviously after coming out of that Air Force mm -hmm. hospital, uh, an active duty military hospital, 1,000 plus beds, mm -hmm. huge hospital. It was actually at the time the largest Air Force hospital in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I believe it's uh, Shepard Air Force Base has it, but this is at Wilford Hall uh, at Lackland Air Force Base, the gateway to the Air Force for all the Air mm -hmm. Force veterans out there. Yeah. Um, and uh, left when I finished, I, I graduated and uh, did my and was there for a few extra years, uh, helping uh, teach some classes, and uh, it, it, and that's where I really started learning a lot about leadership because I had struggled uh, to working with the I guess at the time they were active duty uh, enlisted, mm -hmm. and I was trying to teach them radiation biophysics and. Uh, uh, they were radio in your ass. There were a lot of courses that they needed that the officers were teaching, and they saw an opportunity for me to come in and help. So they, they said, well, We need to keep this guy on, and he can pick up a lot of slack. So I was happy to do that. But I was, you know, 20, 23 at the time, uh, in the early 20s. And in order to get to those classes uh, in, the, in the military, you had to re up, I think, a few times. So most of the enlisted folks that I was teaching were in their 30s. And I was, you know, I was having trouble managing them, you know, that uh, I had to kind of do a lot of the work myself. <laughs> and they, they just took complete advantage of me. So uh, the RCO at the time saw the struggles I was having mm -hmm. and gave me some really good mentoring. I came back and uh, was a little bit harder as a young leader uh, than I probably needed to be. But, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've softened through the years. Uh, I thought I was a little tough coming out because, you know, they, you know he said, you know, they, they're very good at following direction. Yeah, order. 
are just trying to call it. Yeah. Uh, you're just not trying mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, your, your request is to, mm -hmm. is to, uh, is to uh, direct it. Direct it. And mm -hmm. so I, I learned a lot of early leadership lessons there. Went from there to Parkland. Because uh -huh. uh, I was coming back home. So right. I obviously graduated, finished my, my, my time there, and was on my way back home, went to Parkland. And so imagine going from an active duty military hospital where it's spit and polished yeah. uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, and because uh, we had, you know, big to do at the time, I think of Casper Weinberger came to the center of the time. And so, you know, you're constantly, everything's perfect all the time to a county hospital. Not to say anything negative. No, but, but yeah. But this was the old one. Mm. Uh, not the new park one. It was uh, it was a whole different world, mm. uh, and so that was a bit of a culture shock. Uh, and that didn't fit for me very well. So there was okay. shortly after that I made the decision to move to Houston okay. uh, because in nuclear medicine at the time, the the big the big moves were happening, and the big leaders in that community and the society of nuclear medicine were predominantly in Texas Medical Center. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna pack up that. My bag and go there. So that's where I went. And I was there for a number of years. Started with uh, was with Columbia Healthcare, which is now uh, HCA. Yes. And uh, and then transitioned to Tenet Healthcare, and I uh, was with them for 29 and a half years in Columbia. Wow. Years Great. That. So I spent a lot of time. In, in now, did you move around, or were you constantly there in Houston? Um, there was, there was, well, there were five hospitals in in, in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, I, well, actually. Uh, that were ten hospitals, and so I moved. I had three hospitals that were ten hospitals, and then a few that were Columbia hospitals. So between the two, I moved around probably to five different hospitals over a period of twenty-five ish years. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was easy for my family because we weren't having to move around a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and once I established myself in in the in, in the, the tenant hierarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they identified the skill sets that I had, which, and, uh, and I was uh, able to come in, recognize problems, and fix things quickly. And um, usually it was a bit invasive when I was doing that. And so, like, when they needed to make change, uh, and they needed someone to kind of come in and plow the field for the, for the next person that was going to be the one that would be staying, they needed somebody a little bit more invasive to come in and get things done. Yeah. Sometimes you're not really. You're like a bulldozer. Yeah. And so you're not there to make friends. You're not. You're, 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 you've got, you know, some that there's some folks that, that need to change. There's yeah. others, the, the processes that need to change. Uh, there's culture that needs to flip. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, it's a transformation. So let me ask you how you go about that because that's interesting. That that's to have that as your you know skill set of what you do to go in and make changes like that. What's the number one thing that you have to probably understand to be able to do you definitely have to have a vision you have to be able to identify the problems okay uh, or the opportunities i prefer to call them you have to have those opportunities what's working what's not working and, and then communicate your vision in a way that energizes and inspires the team that is staying uh it, and, and part of that sometimes means you're having to uh, address some survivor guilt because uh, there, there's some that aren't going to stay Right. So you have to, that's usually the first order of business. Is to clean it. Is yeah. to kind of get, 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 get the situation right sized. Mm -hmm. and, and then have that communication to kind of address the survivor guilt, I guess is a, is a good way of saying it. And then, uh, and, then, and then beginning that inspirational communication to explain the vision, get everyone energized and, and, and excited about where we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then empowering them to, to get there. Uh, and so that's that is the, uh, a really important key to kind of developing that culture, uh, and creates the, the performance that, that then you know cascades. Uh, so you know whether the opportunity is a quality uh, need, you know you've got let's say quality issues you need to fix or financial issues uh, or staff or, or maybe even you know, uh, morale issues. Whether that morale is for the employees or for the medical staff or for the uh, or for the patients, you know, that most importantly for the patients that, uh, and then kind of uh, re-establishing the, the hospital's uh, uh, relationship with the community, that, you know, all important things. I have to say, it was fantastic coming to Mansfield. <laughs> there was a great relationship with yeah. the community, the employees were 
all fantastic. Uh, the leaders, I mean, uh, it, it was it was very refreshing to what happened in my career. And I'd get all these things done, and then right when it takes your time to get nice and fun, I go somewhere else. Yeah. And so then we start all over again. Yeah. So that that's challenging, but uh, there's fulfillment. And that's an important part of that transformational leadership style. So you're inspiring right. people, but you want to give them that feeling of fulfillment when they accomplished the task and got it done. And, and then they're excited and it's, it's it truly is transformative. So now how did you get to Mansfield? Um, I, well, actually, I kind of did my time there in Houston uh -huh. and in my company uh, for executives, you, you go when you're told to go. Yeah. And you don't get the opportunity to veto very many times. Yeah. But uh, you know, they say, I'll stop pulling the chair out and ask you to sit down if you start objecting. Wow. And so, you know, I had the opportunity, I had a few opportunities. I go to uh, a, a couple of other places that I was less interested in going. Mm -hmm. uh, one was, uh, well, I'm just, uh, I could have gone to Detroit. I uh, was okay. less interested in that opportunity. Okay. Uh, being from Texas, yes. uh, I could go to California. I was less interested in that yeah. uh, from Texas, uh, <laughs> and so then uh, the opportunity presented itself that we had purchased some hospitals uh, in Arizona, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in Arizona is about as close to Texas as I felt mm -hmm. we were going to get in, uh, uh, in just kind of how we relate, mm -hmm. uh, and so I thought that's you know, this is just it's on my wife. But we're going to Tucson. There are no so we had hospitals in Phoenix and hospitals in Tucson, like three hospitals in Tucson that we acquired. And I was the senior uh, executive that had been with the company the longest time helping integrate these hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, there was a team that, that we had, that had stayed on from the prior owners, uh, that it was a joint venture. And so they wanted to keep some of their leaders. But you know, we, and, and that's if I needed to come and systemize them into the new system. So that was my role. And so I had a three-year uh, contract uh, and, and I couldn't and that, wait to get back. So to get my, to the man's deal, I could, what was happening while I was there, the, the company I was with was divesting hospitals in the cities I wanted to be in. And so uh, they sold all the hospitals in Houston. Uh, they had sold their hospitals in the Metroplex in Dallas and Fort Worth. And, and, and so I thought, well, oh, it looks like I'm going to have to maybe make a change. So I put my name out there with that. There's a lot of executive recruiters. Sure. Uh, yeah. there, you are constantly getting phone calls. If you're, if you're good at your job, oh, yeah. you get calls twice a week, you know, sometimes, you know, regular. It's like mm -hmm. stock brokers. They're calling mm -hmm. all the time as well. Mm -hmm. I want the manager for your funding. And so the, uh, yeah, I put my name out there. And then I heard about an opportunity uh, here in Mansfield. You mm -hmm. to know where Mansfield lives. I said, Absolutely. I grew up in a Metroplex. Mm -hmm. Is there a hospital there? <laughs> <laughs> There's something I had, there. <laughs> I had left 20 years prior. Yeah. And so I thought, there was nothing out here. <laughs> Mansfield. I knew Mansfield, but yeah. uh, there wasn't much out there. Yeah. And so they said, Oh, yeah, it's a busting community. It's really on the move. And so I said, Well, you know, yeah, I, mean, uh, mm -hmm. I would be interested. And so uh, I flew down here and I immediately fell in love mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the hospital, the community. Uh, it was, uh, it, yeah, I wasn't prepared for the hold that the city was going to have on me. And this was a community. Yeah. And so I knew, uh, I don't care who's in front of me, I'm going to win this deal. So, <laughs> the um, competition uh, came out. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I talked to some of the folks that interviewed with me. And there were some community members as well that mm -hmm. were part of my area. Yeah. Uh, and that was wise on, on them at this point. Mm -hmm. you know, they had, you know, their peer interviews were in the with the other CEOs. Uh, there were uh, direct reports that, you know, mm -hmm. that were going to report to me. That it, 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 and uh, uh, you know, obviously, my boss is at corporate. Right. And then there was a panel of community members. And uh, and so, you know, knowing your audience, you know, you're trying to, you know, obviously, the ones that are going to report to me are nervous about, you know, a new person coming in. How am I going to manage them? Are they going to get to keep their jobs? And, uh, you know, of course, I'm trying to manage that interview. But the community interview was probably the most enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed hearing because I was asked a lot of questions and I was hearing about the community. And I, was, and I remember saying when I left the Metroplex four years prior, uh, Plano was kind of where Mansfield is now. Mm -hmm. And if we look at kind of what's developed in Plano, Frisco, mm -hmm. kind of north of Dallas, north of Metroplex, uh, and I see the same trajectory now happening in the south. Mm -hmm. And it's like the home part of that. 
And I remember telling my wife, this is it. It's our last, our last, our last hospital. Um, after this, we're, 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 we're going to build our home. This is it. And so uh, that really has energized me more to be so much more focused on. Uh, as a hospital administrator, I think as any business owner, you're, you're focused on more than just your business, but you know, the things that will affect your business. And so you have sure. to work, not, you know, and, and depending on the, the, the executive or the leader, uh, you know, how broad your focus gets, you know, for, for those that really ascend uh, into the high work levels of leadership, you're, you're thinking even global, uh, mm-hmm. global things that are going on, global economy, global impact, what's going to yeah. impact us. Uh, and, you know, COVID, we were way ahead of the public curve from the pandemic in Mansfield. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're, we were already preparing in November, December. Uh, you know, we had we had shipped in uh, extra ventilators. You know, I knew this was coming, and uh, and so we had stockpiles. We were ready to go, uh, which ended up benefiting the health system because we were so stockpiled when the thing hit in March, uh, and supplies were difficult to get. They took a lot of our stock and redistributed it to the other uh, the other system hospitals, mm-hmm. which really wasn't good for me. But, <laughs> you know, but at least we were ahead of the other yeah. systems. Uh, so I, I think that depending on where you, you know, kind of how broad your vision is, you know, I, I truly believe that that, that uh, my role is is less focused on hospital operations, which I can do and I've done for many many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I empower my team to do those jobs, mm-hmm. and I focus more on you know, kind of what's what's in the community that I need to be focused on to make sure that the community is healthy, so that the hospital stays healthy. Because there are some. Uh, you know, most businesses, and I mean, the health, hospitals is a business too. Yes. Uh, uh, and just like the school district is a business, and and there are there are businesses that can decide to pack up and move and move if things change in a community that maybe are favorable, and then there are those that can't. And you know, school districts, hospitals, churches, the city, you know. Uh, we can't just decide not we are not happy with how things are going. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so we're very invested in the success of the community. And so you know, Good point. You know, coupling that with I want to retire here really has kept me focused on what's around the corner, what's over the horizon. You know, what do I need to be focusing on that may not that isn't today, but tomorrow. And so and so that leads me uh, to this next question. Because now this was it this year that you uh, are now on MEDC um, right. board, okay? So and I know that you've been involved in economic development in Houston. Yeah. So so tell me about that. Um, well, obviously, uh, you know, having an interest in the, in the mm-hmm. welfare of the of the community in the city, you know, that's a good place to be and having experience. Uh, you know, I was uh, sliding my name out there to, to, to the right to the right folks, uh, hoping that I would get a bite, and then they said, "Yeah, come on, let's sit down and talk about it." So uh, that you know, that helped. That, that certainly helped. Um, having some experience in Houston, yes, you know, uh, lots of successes. And yeah, I was on the north side of Houston and was focused in that area because that's where my last hospital was. And it was right in an area where we were uh, recruiting Exxon. Uh, they were moving, they were consolidating their headquarters from Fairfax, uh, uh, Virginia to, uh, to, 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 the, to Houston. Uh, and the, there, was a, there was a spot, a, a plot of land that we really were trying to get them focused on. And so a group of us that, uh, and, and we all kind of had different focuses. Uh, met with the Exxon executive leadership and we're, you know, pitching just like every other city. It's like going for the Olympics, uh, you know, and you've got your team members there and you've got your strategies and we're all kind of thinking. We met with TechStop ahead of time to try to address roads and improvements and, you know, you, you have familiarity with, you know, uh, tax increment reinvestment zones and PIDs and all the things that you can try to offer. Uh, it, but the thing, the big thing, for for us to be able to work with tech with TechStop, uh, there was a, a loop that they were planning for the uh, for the for the city, and Houston is a, it has has a number of loops. You know, it's kind of a six uh, uh, four ten loop in t- inside the city, and then you know a, a loop six that got, kind of goes around, and then there was this other loop that was uh, I think now was uh, 
toward his 90, highway 90, that loops around. And the, the focus that there were not plans for that <coughs> section where we had identified for Exxon until, I mean, that probably would, would have started working on it now. And this was back in wow. 2008, 2009. And right when the economy was just falling apart, you know, 2008 when everything blew yes. up. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, those of us that lived through it, you know, again, those executives that are kind of paying attention or trying to position their businesses so that, you know, what if you read the tea leaves, you see what's coming and you start the pivoting, right. trying to pivot in advance. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it was, this, you know, similarly, it, it, there's there's a ways to help your community. And the big way is, you know, if we could have gotten like, well, we were successful in getting Exxon to come, which added another, for the health, for the health system, another 20 plus thousand lives what I would call insured covered lives in the community. So it's an immediate boost. Uh, I, I learned that they actually had their own medical complex. So they had their own primary care physicians. And of course else. Uh, So I mean, that kind of <laughs> diffused us a little bit. I had a big plan about that. Yeah. And I was kind of like, okay, well, we got their own doctor and everything else. That's great. But they, they, they're going to need a hospital. So right. we were able to kind of work that piece. But I think what was the deal, what, the, what made the deal really happen was being able to get TechStop to agree to move that section up on the timeline and then give them a lot of state uh, allowances that we worked with the state. So we had some local things we were able to do for to evade taxes and some other things. And so it, it, that was, you know, really kind of the biggest thing that, that we were able to do. Then there were other things. We did some livable center grants, city grants. Uh, and you know we're able to do a lot of things with parks and, and uh, so do you have like a philosophy or uh how you look at economic development i mean well i mean it's uh you, you know really again yeah, it depends on, on on what the what the need is uh in houston at the time and in that area we were really trying to uh revitalize mm -hmm. the area we were in and so some you know some cities will you know that that's necessary you guys you need revitalization yeah. and in and so that was the focus there was uh, so we were in many cases you know doing a lot doing demolition uh to try to create more attractive pad sites for for businesses to come in because everyone wants their taxes lower their property taxes decreased and they'll use there's a lot of ways to do that but one of the easiest ways is to have more uh, retail sales occurring in that community so sales tax uh, uh, uh revenues coming in from the sales tax without that sales tax going up but you know it just adds more to the, to the, to the city's coffers and uh, then it gives you the opportunity to bring those taxes down so you know we're focused in economic we were focused in economic development on trying to revitalize and kind of make that happen and so it meant okay we can tear down some of these old dilapidated you know, buildings we we're buying our properties where we could it made sense that we knew we could kind of clean up and resell at the same time we're uh in some of the areas you know old buildings were becoming dens of uh uh, 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 bad or bad things were happening. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it, it gave us an opportunity to kind of address a couple of problems at the same right. time. Uh, and so, you know, that coupled with some of the livable center grants we were able to get to try to, you know, create better walkways and parks and uh, and, and foliage really you know, help beautify and then create a, a, an environment that's a little bit easier to sell. So it was a different, you know, it was different there. But let's say on Manchester. Yeah. At Omaska, we again uh, after spending thirty some thirty plus years going into in the in the hospitals that needed help and, and trying to fix demographics or whatever it this has been the utopia yeah. of of, uh, of for me of, 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 of hospitals of cities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I absolutely love Mansfield. I can't say that enough, uh, and I'm happy to be back home. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> in the metroplex. Well, it's changed a lot in 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's it's still home. Right. Uh, you know, it'll always be home. Uh, it is what I grew up with, and, and, and so it's it's great to be back. But you know, Mansfield obviously is a little bit different. The same things. Everyone, you know, after as a citizen, all my property taxes continue to go down. Yeah. Uh, but to be able to do more for the the uh, the school district. So you know, we partner with the school district as much as we can. Uh, you know, really excited to see them be able to get the paint swap done. And, 
Uh, and so there, there are things that are going to help the district and by helping the schools be stronger because it's those things that help the city, the citizens, or people who want to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, security, schools, healthcare, worship, and safety, and all these things that really kind of are that they're looking for. And the actually, surprisingly, companies are looking for that too. Uh, yeah, they, they they come. It's not yeah. all economic, and what can you give us to right. they incentivize? And so yes. I just, because everybody's doing that. Right. They're, they're just, uh, you know, they're, they're employees. They have to know that they can get work. Okay, here's a question for you, Mr. Competition. All right. Um, <laughs> so if we're competing with, you know, all these other, because right now Dallas Fort Worth is a big attractor anyway. Yeah. We got people coming, whether, no matter what, right? And businesses are coming. And as businesses start looking at DFW, how do you pull them? How do you? compete with? Yeah, well, you know, again, a lot depends on, on, I think, I think it kind of comes back to where, where are they going to get their workforce? Mm -hmm. And where is their workforce going to want to live? And so, uh, <coughs> you know, I think we have a lot that we can sell in Mansfield. Uh, we, I, I kind of feel like the, like, we're kind of in, well, at least the hospitals and what I would call Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia uh, because we're right between these two highways that go one into Fort Worth, one into Dallas, and it's 20, 25 to 30 minutes in the downtown on both sides. Uh, that's a big selling point for residents that, uh, and for businesses to be able to say, you know, your workforce can come here. Uh, they're not fighting if they, if, if, you know, they can live here and uh, they have access. They have access to major sports. They have access to, to, to attractions. Uh, they have access to you know a, a lot of things that we don't have yet. But uh, I'm I want to make sure we get all that here. And uh, because then they will, they, there was a uh, a slogan that they had when I was in Houston that that the chamber actually had called "Buy Nearby," and uh, you know, they really incentivized tried to help citizens stay and buy in the community. And so, you know, we have some work to do. Uh, I think a lot of the things that we're looking at uh, in uh, MEDC uh, are focused on uh, program or uh, businesses that are that will attract retail good anchor tenants uh, that will then, you know, spur a better better retail. Uh, and so, when we can get those things here that the community are leaving for, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a game changer because that, that just again feeds the city's economy and uh, and then we all win so I, I think we all it's the key is to try to get these businesses to want that to either a bring their workforce uh, and live here or get their workforce from here and so partnering with the schools and the colleges to help to have those programs so it's not you know when we're trying to convince a company to come part of that sales to them may include taking uh, uh, taking representatives uh, from from schools, colleges that may be willing to develop programs to support <laughs> that business. And so uh, and in turn, you know, those relationships and residencies and uh, 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 you know, it start to occur where you know, we'll, we, we will do the training and uh, We'll, you know, we'll provide you the, the, the workforce and you know, also, you know, put a residency program together. And that, those are the things that start really mattering. And so it, it a lot of times is the intangibles that close the deal. Right. Uh, so, all right, we need to probably wrap up with Facebook right. and then let audience ask you a ton of questions. But just for a final little wrap up here, what do you feel like um, the focus is for the immediate future? For I'm gonna let you decide how you wanna where, uh, where you wanna take that. You know, my, my immediate thought goes to the hospitals, you know, sure. uh, because that's the yeah. that's my industry. And so as the community is growing, obviously the hospital needs to needs to continue to grow with it. Right. We last month celebrated our 16th year uh, of serving the community here in Mansfield. Uh, oh, those and, guys. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean there's only four years for me, the next month will be four years. And you know it's hard to think of 
you know, to really fathom four mm -hmm. years passing by that quickly, but two and a half, almost three years of that was COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in that time, we've accomplished a, a, cool, a huge number of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've essentially taken the hospital from a community hospital to what we call a tertiary care hospital that is a higher QE so that patients are staying here. Actually, we're, we are seeing more traffic now coming into Washington than, than, than than we've ever seen before. Hmm. Uh, and you know, the goal like, obviously is to, is to have uh, the hospital be a higher level of care facility. Um, that, that to me is, is, uh, is, is critical. So, and, and we need beds, obviously more patient beds as the community grows and the citizenry grows, uh, got to, the hospital has to grow. So right. we're, we're expanding uh, next month or the month uh, in March, we'll be uh, building out our shelf floor in our second tower. Uh, to add another 30, 32 beds. And uh, and then we have plans for a third tower, which will get us uh, uh, just under 500 beds. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a game changer. Once we have that in place, then there'll be no stopping. You know? wow. it, 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 the, the goal for, for us is to have a level, a level one trauma center on the south side of the Metroplex serving uh, the, the, the community, the real community around us, and us, Alvarado, Alvarado, Midlothia, Waxahachie, right. and, and just kind of continuing in that direction. It's it's a long hike for, you know, to, to get to, to Waco mm -hmm. uh, here in the middle. And yeah. so we can, we can, off, we can offer, uh, that's the goal. And that's what I see as the vision mm -hmm. uh, for, for the hospital, obviously for the city. And it's the same question that I got asked uh, in one of my interviews. Was, you know, when I started talking about economic development, they were asking a lot of questions. What do you think the city needs? And so I was saying, well, you know, it's the same. If you follow the same model that the plan was using, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we need to have university presence, uh, which we have now. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we need a uh, you know large convention center or hotel type presence, uh, so that we're attracting uh, more you know that uh, more of that type of need. Uh, and you know, and then again, continue to do what what the city's been doing, which is you know, again focus on economic development, make sure that we're making the right decisions for the for 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 the available property that we have. Yeah, because you know. it's you know, I keep hearing that we just got twenty five percent left. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so what's going to go yeah, there? Yeah, you know, it has to be the, the right. Yeah, uh, it has to fit with the, with the long term plans. Yeah, uh, for the for the community. Well, in your growth too. Think about what comes with your growth. No, well, and I mean I have to put different hands on it again yeah. to avoid having conflicts. You know, I really try, and I really do make a conscious effort to 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 not or to, to, to do what's best for the community if I'm wearing that hat. Right. Uh, and if I'm wearing the hospital hat, to do what's best for the hospital. So it depends on what my role is, and I and, I, and I've learned to be true to to the spirit of whatever hat I'm wearing. Okay. So. All right, so we're gonna transition. Okay. And um, so we're gonna say goodbye to Facebook. And